Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back into the Keep Boone Healthy Facebook channel. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd. And uh, as we talk about all ways that we are working to keep Boone healthy, part of that is about exercise uh, for all of us. And that means all ages. And there's a, a great program that we're going to talk about today that many of you are aware of. And, uh, and this will be a, an opportunity for us to just dive deeper into Girls on the Run. And with us today, uh, the program coordinator uh, for Girls on the Run, Jackie Dyer. Uh, Jackie, great to have you. Uh, with us and uh, appreciate the time here on this this beautiful Wednesday. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about Girls on the Run. Yeah, well, well give us the, the history lesson here first. Uh, I know a lot of people have heard about this program, but but what was it that got uh, this, this such a meaningful program started here in our community? So uh, we got started, I guess it was back in 2007 it's been a while um is when we started contacting it's a uh the program that was started in charlotte and um back in 1996 and they have councils all over the country now but we first heard about it in 2007 up here in the high country and started contacting them and trying to figure out how to get a a group going, a council started up here, and uh, they paired me with uh, Mary Cheryl Hareen, who's our director, and it took us a couple of years. We finally had our first group of girls in 2009, I believe, um, and we had uh, 15 girls and three coaches, and now we've grown to where we have, we are in Ash, Allegheny, um, Avery, Watauga, and Wilkes counties. And we have, um, up until COVID hit, we had, uh, we were saturated pretty well in most of those areas. Um, so I think we had at our last season, we had over 200 participants and 50 volunteer coaches. So um, it's exciting to watch it grow from uh, such a small group in the beginning um, to being all over the high country. And, and for those that may not be as familiar, uh, the age range and, and really the program in general, what are you hoping to accomplish by getting um, uh, these, these young members of our community together in a way that, that can uh, get them active? But also, I, I know this is a lot about uh, building confidence and, and, and also building some healthy habits, too. Uh, how has that program evolved over the time that you've mentioned? So uh, actually the curriculum was developed in Charlotte and when we got it, we just kind of took it on. It was already something that was in place. They have uh, two different programs they operate. Uh, one is for girls in third through fifth grade. Uh, the other, and that's called Girls on the Run. There's another um, arm of the program that's really for middle school girls and that's called uh, Heart and Soul. And that has evolved a good bit over the uh, history um, since we've got started just because uh, middle school girls are um, trying to cater more to them and meet them where they are, meet their needs. Um, but the um, the mission of both programs is really to instill confidence in girls. Um, there's many different lessons that they go over. There is a couple of different set curriculums and we uh, alternate one curriculum one season and then the next one another just so girls aren't um, repeating the same lessons every time. But, but um, the lessons revolve around, there's always lessons about bullying and how to deal with uh, those challenges that they face in school. There's also lessons about nutrition and healthy eating, a um, lot of self-esteem building. Um, they also, towards the end of the program, um, or the end of the, the season, the girls uh, will conduct a community service project that they design completely on their own. It's not earth shattering, of course. I mean, they have to develop it and then implement it within one one session. But um, the idea of teaching girls about what it means to be a member of a community and how you can give back to your community, of course, is always uh, one of the main focuses of the program. Um, they do every lesson. The girls will get together and have a discussion, depending on what the topic is, every day for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then for the remainder of the time, they um, participate in running activities and uh, it's they really we make it lots of fun lots of games for the girls so that they really don't even realize how much they're running during um, during each meeting um, and really what they're building to is their training to complete that 5k which happens at the end of every season we have one in December and usually one in uh, May 
So we're adjusting a little bit now. Things have changed a little bit, but still hoping to uh, have that fall 5K in December. Sure, and, and, and I'm sure that, that kind of leads into the next question. How has COVID changed the way that you've implemented this program and, and the opportunities for outreach that you have with these girls? So I was really impressed with how Girls on the Run International led us through this from the beginning of when things started in March up until now. Um, they worked really hard to adapt the program to uh, make it so that we are able to host this uh, program now either in person or uh, virtually and um, they've changed the curriculum so we can go back and forth between either format pretty seamlessly. Um, so, and they've also, uh, another thing that they have done is they have shortened the season. We originally would meet for 10 weeks, uh, 20 lessons. They've shortened it to eight weeks, uh, 16 lessons in the hopes that we will finish up uh, or so that we can plan it to finish up before Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, just to kind of keep things, and they've also uh, lowered, we used to be able to have uh, 15 girls as a maximum number of participants. We've lowered that down now to 12 just to keep group size small and implemented, of course, uh, different protocols about social distancing. And most of our meetings for the sites that are gonna be in person are gonna be conducted outside. Um, so we feel much, much safer with that option. Um, we do have two um, sites that are gonna be meeting virtually this season um, and then they will start virtually and finish virtually and those are going to be uh, sites that really originally would have been school-based sites, but since we're not allowed to uh, use the school facilities, uh, the coaches and um, the administrators just felt better about having things completely virtual. So, so what do the sites look like for this year? So for this year uh, in Watauga County, we're going to have four sites, um, which is really exciting to me. I was um, worried that uh, we weren't going to be able to offer this um, during the fall season. But as I said, we have two school-based sites um, and those are gonna be virtual. Uh, the coaches are gonna be uh, teachers that have coached with us for many seasons. One is gonna be at Green Valley School and the other one is gonna be at uh, Mabel Elementary. Um, we have two in-person sites that are gonna be able uh, to meet in person. One is gonna be at the Big Blue um, and the other one is going to be at Boone United Methodist Church. Boone United Methodist, uh, the girls there will meet from from 3 to 4.15 on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then um, the Big Blue, same time, 3 to 4.15, and they'll be meeting on Mondays and Wednesdays. Excellent. And, and Those are what we've got in Wichita County. Um, we do have a few sites down in Wilkes County um, that are going to be uh, meeting. Most of those sites are going to be at um, group homes or um, uh, environments where the kids live pretty close to, in a close proximity together. So um, that was another way we've adapted a little bit. Instead of having it being at schools or community-based sites, we've got it at uh, kind of community living facilities, I would say, down there. Sure. Well, and, and Jackie, I feel like this is such an important time to have a program like this too, um, because of, of the, the digital learning that we're seeing throughout our community and, and kids are in front of computers a, a little bit more than, than they normally would be, but certainly Absolutely. activity, bringing activity in, into, the, uh, into the routine here is, is so important. But then also, um, you know, this is a, a, a time in our, our, um, our, our way about our, our daily operations here where I think uh, kids pick up on anxieties and, and for them to have an outlet and for them to have that, that way to gain confidence too. I, I feel like that's such an important part of the message that, that you're able to, to put forward now. Ha, have you found that that has been really kind of that, that sweet spot right now to, to be able to service uh, our, our young minds that way and, and also to, to just give them a place where they can unwind a little bit as well? Absolutely. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, more about that, uh, especially with kids not being able to be in school and interact as much as they would personally. Um, of course, the in-person sites um, are going to offer this opportunity for them to be able to meet and come together and still be able to develop relationships with their peers. Um, but even the virtual sites, they're still going to be meeting in much the same setting that we're meeting right now. So, And they're going to be interacting with one another. Um, even though it's called Girls on the Run and the girls do a lot of running, I would say the meat and the potatoes of the program 
is really the discussions that are that happen between the girls in the group setting. They learn so much from each other um, and the relationships that they develop with each other um, is really something I think about, I think is really what makes the program um, as successful as it is because it's based on those discussions. And also too, um, this is an opportunity for girls to interact with um, other adults who are caring, um, caring um, leaders uh, and role models. I think that, um, you know, being in the house with your parents all the time, um, you know how that goes um, when what? you're it's, with it's the same joy. person. All the, <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see another face every now and again, you right. know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that, and, 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 a, and an adult that they can have a conversation with and um, kind of guide them through other than just the, the parents that are having it. Sure. And sure. Uh, that's, that's my opinion about that. So, so for folks that are interested in, in getting involved with this, um, what's the best way for them to go about contacting and, and getting registered and, and, and what kind of timeframes are you looking at there? So uh, we do have registration is open now. Uh, you can find that on our website. It is um, gotr.appstate.edu. All of our sites are listed there. Um, we are the start date for this season. It's going to be the last week of September. So we're going to look at starting, I believe, the Monday of that week is September 28th, and we'll run for eight weeks. Um, so, like I said, registration is open now. Um, we uh, do have a few. We, are, like, as I said, normally our group size is a maximum of 15. We are limiting it to 12. Um, so, we do have a few registration or a few sites that are um, um, not full, but definitely getting there. Um, so, I'm happy to see that. Um, but we do still have space available if anyone is interested. Um, well, and, and I know that uh, I've attended uh, a few of the Jesse Miller auctions uh, back back in the days where we could actually get each other together. I know that this is a program that gets great support from the community. Are there still ways that, that businesses or individuals might be able to, through a sponsorship or donation, uh, contribute to the cause to, to make sure that, that the program can get uh, funded the way that it needs to, to, to provide the valuable service that it does? Yes, we do. Um, you will actually find a donate button on that uh, same website, gotr.appstate.edu. We have had um, several of our fundraising um, avenues cut short um, this season. Um, and I would love to say that also too, uh, so for the, on that same avenue, the uh, fee structure for Girls on the Run, it costs us about $100 per girl to operate per season. Um, we do offer scholarships to anyone who um, feels like they need it. It's all on your honor. You don't have to prove any kind of uh, financial hardship or submit any kind of documentation. Um, when you register, you simply choose what uh, you think your family is comfortable paying. So $100 is the full amount per season, but we also offer, offer, offer partial scholarships at the rate of 75 uh, for girls who qualify for free and reduced lunch, it's $25 a season. So um, right now um, in the past, well, up until this season, we have operated about a 65 to 70% scholarship rate. So all of that, all the funds that we raise goes directly to uh, support those scholarships for girls on their own. Well, um, we'll we'll put the uh, the information for the uh, the website and and the contact info uh, in the comments of of this video posting, and uh, we'll certainly appreciate everything that that you and the and the full team that that puts this together, all of your instructors and and those that have helped organize this over the years. Um, speaking on behalf of a family that's had two girls go through it, it's a wonderful program um, and and such a timely resource right now to uh, to again get great information and in and that. That relationship building, uh, it, it's such a key time. I, I know it's very important, and, and thank you for everything that, that you're doing to make it happen here. So uh, best of luck with this season, and uh, hopefully uh, the weather cooperates with you as much as you can, as it can with those outside meetings. I hope so. I hope so. All right. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, David.